like there's no way that you could just exit all of your uh, all your CVP because you only get I think half points for it. So you there's a there's a lot to do, but I think it I think it's going to be a very good scenario because it essentially means that you can strive for more than one type of action, so to speak. Whereas like you know some scenarios are just capture X uh, X building, which you know, not to downplay those scenarios, but um, it's nice to have the, the diversity, I guess. Also, I'm really glad that the cricket is not coming through on my mic. Um, all right. So we were at turn four for the white Russians post weather. So that's not something I need to worry about. All right, now let's just go straight into rally phase. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna try rallying my guys in. Uh, A4 uh, plus one minus one sweet they will rally uh, and then I'll try to repair these LMGs so uh, the left one first in L0 and then the other one uh, single single sweet I will take those I just have the one rally. Mm -hmm. I think that's a success, actually. It should definitely be a success, yeah. Because you'll have a minus one from the building, so. Yeah. Alright. Prep fire phase. I have. Um, all right, let's just do the easy ones first. Uh, K1 will shoot into J1, so it's a uh, six. Stick to up me like glue. Two. Keep your eyes open. Oh hey, thanks. Uh, four gathers. Uh, six up two. <laughs> all right. It's a good start. Um, L1 and M2 will shoot into L2, so it is a. Uh, 12 up 2. They cower to 8, I believe. IFT, 8, 10. Yeah, that's a miss. I like how someone followed, but it doesn't even mention them being in the chat. That's weird. Yeah, that wouldn't, don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> anything for the numbers, anything for the numbers. Um, uh, what do I want to do? Uh, the squad in 03 is going to uh, shoot at the adjacent guy for a 6 up 3, or sorry, 3 up 3. I was hoping, I was hoping maybe Snake Eyes. Um, both CC5 and BB5 will shoot again at uh, G1, so it is a uh, 4 firepower uh, up 2. They don't cower because of the leader. Uh, 6 on 4 NMC, finally. And I have rate of fire. Actually, it's a seven, so that's just a two fast track. I'll take it. 
As long as it strips that damn <laughs> concealment. And I think he gives it that as well. Alright, so uh, they'll shoot again. So it'll be an 8 firepower uh, up 3 instead. They don't cower, but that'll be another pinkness check. And no rate. Sorry about that. I just missed any of that. Oh, uh, so the eight, eight firepower shot, because it's a fortified building, it's a nine on eight, so they take another pin test check. And they pass again. All right, where else? Yeah, sorry about that. Discord decided to crap itself on me, so yeah. Yeah. No worries. Uh, I think the only other thing I'll, I will try is... Oh, actually, it's a plus three shot. Mm. Am I doing anything else with them? No. Um, L0 will shoot at J1, so it's a 10 up 3. Alright. They cower. So it goes down to 8, it's a 5 on 8, so 2 MC, and uh, I have to double check. I think that's my sniper, so nothing happens. Oops. Oops. Um, yeah, that's my sniper. Alright, that I will take. Uh, I do have Rate of Fire. No, not worth it. Oh, uh, I also forgot to take DM off my guy in L0. Alright, movement phase. Um, my guy in uh, A4 is going to move into A5 for one. Okay. B5 for two. Go ahead. And C5 for four. Alrighty. Squad in Q2 loses CX, goes to Q3 for one. Okay. Two. Mm -hmm. And four into Q5. Okay. One squad in S1 moves to O1 for one. All right. O2 for two. Okay. And N2 for three. Hold on, I'm thinking in a sec. Yep. Okay. Second squad in S1 goes O1 for one. Mm -hmm. O2 for two. Mm -hmm. P2 for three. Okay. And the third squad simply goes O1, then O2. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. That guy 
Jeez. Uh, the squad in Q1 will use bypass in Q1, or sorry, Q2. So one moving point goes into Q3 for two. Okay. Three. Okay. And ends in P4 for four. All right. Uh, the elite squad with the DC in N0 goes to N1 for one. Mm -hmm. N2 for two. And we'll fire at them there. All right. This is from K4. Okay. So that'll be a three down three. And if nothing else, they will try to throw themselves into N3 for four. Uh, squad and W2. Oh. oh uh, sorry. Grabbed it by accident. Oh. <laughs> you want to put it back? Yeah. Uh, yeah there you go. Uh, W2 loses CX. Goes to X1 for two. Okay. And, X, and uh, J0 for four. Okay. Well, there's another squad gone. Uh... Thinking, oh no, I actually wouldn't. Um, uh, oh, you know what? I can't. Okay. Uh, BB2 assault moves to BB. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, they'll lose their CX. Uh, assault move to BB1. And uh, I don't think anybody can see them. So, defensive fire face. Okay, uh, the unit in the foxhole here will fire at L1, so L2 to L1. Okay. So I think it's six flat. Mm -hmm. Uh, the machine gun in G1 will fire at uh, CC5. Okay. That's the only target he's got. Two, three, four, five, six. So it's a uh, two up two. Actually, is what? I always I don't know why I'm confusing this or second guessing myself. But the wall is plus two. Shirts. Plus two, yeah. And six, all two, PTC, and you have rate. Dash six, seven, just passed. We will fire again. Alright. Nothing. And that's it. Uh, advanced fire phase. Uh, I'm only going to bother with uh, J0 to J1 as a 3 up 2. That's a miss. I don't think I have any other worthwhile shots, so 
Uh, route phase. Preps, defensive. So, right. I, I don't think J1 has any real routable path. Like, I2 to I3, you've got visibility from down here. Yeah, I. so I'm trying to think of... Uh, I1 isn't possible because you're still adjacent. K2 isn't possible because you're still adjacent and getting closer. Um, J2 is... Uh, K1 has line of sight. And no hindrance there, so... Yeah, that's sort of... That'd be the only problem for him. Um, yeah, I think they surrender. So they surrender. Uh, who takes it? Wait, uh, do you pick or... I always forget. Who's yours? I forget if it's you that picks or if I that picks. Captor's choice if more than one capturing unit. Okay. Um, I will toss it to this guy in K1, and they will uh, deploy as a result. So I think they become prisoners, no? Uh, yeah. Uh, a full squad? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I don't think there's any routes. Alright, advance phase. Uh, BB1 to AA1. The full squad in J0 goes to... Oops, J1. The half squad in K1... We'll go into J-O. L1 and M2 will go to the Foxhole and L2. Um, the Prisoners and Half Squad go to L0, and they're going to shuffle out. Um, one squad with the LMG goes to K1. One squad with the LMG goes to L1. The conscripts in the road go to, uh, from N2, go to N1, or N3, sorry. Uh, the elite squad with the uh, DC charge will go to N4. O3, uh, who loses their CX, uh, goes to O4. Conscripts in O2 go to O3. Conscripts in P2 go to O3. P4 goes to O5. And Q5 goes to uh, Q6. Uh, and then C5 goes to C6. CC phase, we have the CC Foxhole. Um, I don't think Foxhole generates a ambush chance. So it's just a, I'm at 2 to 1, and you're either... Oh. I'll attack it from just 1. So it's not good. Perfect. So, I have an 8. Pretty sure it's nothing. CC, 2 to 1, no. 1 over. I won one casualty okay. reduction. So. so here's a casualty reduced and melee. And that's it. I'm gonna go uh, check some real quick. I'll be right back. Ten seconds. Yeah, sure. No worries. Go ahead.
We need, uh, we need heavy rain. Oh, what is that? Stops or rain? I forget. Yeah. Nope, it stops. stops. Uh. Does that mean there's no mist as well? That is true. Oh, damn. Yeah, there's no mist on the like, there's no there's no no. Yeah, mist. I don't I don't know why they didn't they um it's weird, it's like the one uh it's like the one weather counter that somehow like it doesn't seem to mirror all the other weather counters. So here's my dilemma. Mm -hmm. I am very much leaning toward tossing in the towel with this one. Hmm. The reason being that even with the reinforcements, I don't think I have the numerical strength to prevent you from capturing the buildings. Okay. Uh, right. Let's do let's do quick calculation. Okay. Put CVP down to zero. Uh, I need 80 or more. Counts CVP and LEP. So, first turn, there was one casualty. Uh, oh, those are dummies? Okay, so then. So, three CVP in terms of losses. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven buildings. So seven times five, five. So I'm at less than half. Um, well, see, here's the trick. I I can't prevent you from seizing wait. like most of the buildings in the Two, south map, south part of the map. Six. So I'm at eight actually. I don't know why. There. So I'm just over half. Um, all right um so my reinforcements are four squads and a leader essentially four squads all, can do a lot they can that's true but you have a lot more squads already on the map hmm. and you have range benefits on me as well as support weapon. You you way out on me support weapon wise. Well, the MMGs I won't be able to move all that much. Um, or at least I I don't feel like I, I would be. Uh, I kind of the idea I have right now is to keep them there. Um, okay, so if I need eighty, yeah, so, so here's the thing. More. So you need eighty. So you need uh what thirty five more. Not counting, just just flat building VP would be thirty five more. So that's seven more buildings. So, uh, yeah, seven more buildings because this, like, I think we can safely assume that there's enough manpower in this area that uh, the melee will end with with the uh, Russia's dying. So they potentially might not. You know, that's that's always a possibility. But um, I think that's uh, that's definitely an option. I mean, I think the best case for me there is that it's a mutual, it's a pyrrhic thing where I take out yeah, exactly. your squads and, you know, we, we both lose squads. So that's that's that. But I suspect what will happen is at best I'll get um, the half squad and that's it. So you'll still have a squad there. So yes, you'll lose a squad there, but, eh, you know, it's a wash in terms of the victory points. So you need seven buildings, really. Um, so there's, on the hill, there's six. And then there's at least one, one or two in town that I have no units in. So, well, yeah. so so the way I'm 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 thinking about it, or I'm I'm looking at it is uh, so if the reinforcements come on this turn, uh, does it say? Just cavalry either on turn four, not on SSR five. SSR five. If at all solely. Mongolian player must inform, blah, blah, blah. Any non 
Any one non-west edge. Okay, that kind of also sucks. Um, hmm. So non-west edge is essentially uh, these three sides. So there's one thing you could do, which would I don't I can't say stifle. Um, I, I don't know like exactly how how um, uh, important to make it sound I guess. Uh, but if you do come from the east edge. I mean, just the distances involved, you can get to here, you know? You can get to this cluster. Yeah, sure, no, I, I, I certainly I certainly can make it a difficult, like, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, I just think it's very doable for you, particularly because you've got four more turns. Is it four more turns? Well, three more after this, but that's a lot of turns. I mean, three turns is a lot of turns. Um... And, and you've got a lot of firepower coming in there, you know? So given that you really only need to take, if I if I bring them in now, you need to take seven to eight. So if we say that's basically the entire bottom half of the, the village, I think that's very doable for you. Now, this little cluster up here, around F4, that might be a little bit more of a tough nut to crack, but I don't know. The medium machine guns, like if I'm committing the, uh, the cavalry to come in on the south edge there, or I'm sorry, the east edge, the, the bottom part of it. Right. Um, that's basically hanging them out to dry. Like, they're not going to get any support, and uh, these guys, plus whatever you decide to detach, those guys are going to be able, should be able to handle, do that handily, because the medium machine guns can just keep firing at them over and over. And now, well, so, yes. so the way, the way that I think is important to look at it uh, is that these guys with the LMGs can't do anything um, it, like they can shoot at K4. That's it. And anything else is blocked by by LOS. So this group is kind of protected for for quite some time because of the fortified building. It means I'd have to constantly shoot with the MMGs to to break the guys in there before I can attempt to get in there myself. Yeah, no, um, I understand. Uh, what I'm saying is that cluster is relatively safe, but. They also can't do anything really to support anybody else for the similar reasons you mentioned. You don't have a line of sight that way, but I also don't have a line of sight back the other way. So you have your whole crew basically sweeping through the southern part of map, which is really all you need. Um, those buildings are nice, but they're not necessary. Well, and... G2 sees J2, that's for sure. Um... Yeah, that's sure, that's true, but... I mean, you know, you can do some dashing action. I mean, you, you can move around through M3 and M4 like that way. Like, most of your targets are down up on the hill anyway. So, yes, that's also assuming that I have anything of value in G2. Right. Like, right now, I've got a 127 in there with a leader, yes. Or visible, I should say. Um, but that's half a firepower. Like, I can't fire with that right. at anything more than 2 hex range. So, y yay, I2, I got the crossroads there, I guess. But J2, it's it's nothing. Like, is there even a half firepower on the IIFT? No, no. One is always the lowest. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't really... Like, they're they're there, I guess, but, uh, you know, unless that concealed guy is something else, um, <clears throat> you're not looking at a whole heck of a lot of, of threat there, I guess is what I'm saying. Right, so, right, right. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm not saying it wouldn't take you to, like, the end of the game. Like, it might be, like, a turn seven thing where we're fighting over the last building or something along those right. lines. But I'm pretty sure you can break the, like, you know, you can break the units in K4. You've got machine guns and DCs coming up on them. Um, you know, I, I'm fairly sure that those guys are going to break if I don't have, if I don't move them out. Like, that may be a limit, you know, jump them over into the, into the woods, that kind of thing. So, yes, I could bring the cavalry in, and they would delay things. Like, I could certainly dump them into the houses and make life annoying for you. But I'm not sure that I can prevent your victory. I'll put it that way. Like, I, I don't right. even think I don't even think it would come down to like the last turn in terms of buildings. Like, I think it would be fairly easy for you to kind of clear out. Um, you've got enough firepower that's outranging me to start with. Um, that it's going to be very difficult for me to do that. Now, say I bring them in up in the north and kind of try and do some cavalry charge bullshit. Um, you're really not exposed to that particularly. I don't think. 
like the LMG guys, like the guys over here, maybe in the back, like over there, they might be vulnerable. I don't know. I don't know if you can cavalry charge into a green. I think you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the only thing you can't cavalry charge into is a building. Um, or I guess technically like a water obstacle, but that's like every unit can't go into a water obstacle. Um, I mean. These guys are vulnerable. These guys are kind of vulnerable. I think the problem, though, like, e even if, even if, like, I want to say, like, oh, yeah, they're vulnerable and stuff, like, it's, cavalry charge doesn't necessarily make it any uh, easier to survive shots. Oh, yeah, you're going to get torn to pieces coming in. Like, the only one that might get hit with it is Q6, just because they're so close to the edge of the board. They're, like, they're just not going to get very many opportunities to fire. Well, like, you know, I could get a shot with them and maybe do something, but there's still three other squads, right? So it's, you know. I think you get, yeah, you get, like, two shots. You get the shot in when they go into R6 or R5, and then you get another triple point blank, I think, when they, when they actually enter your, your uh, hex, if I remember. I, yeah. I forget. But, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to force you to, to play it if you don't want to play it. Um, oh, I'm just, I'm just kind of looking at it going, eh, you know, um. Well, if you don't, like, I, I think, again, like, if you don't think your odds are that great, then we can always call it. I think the, um, I think if that's going to be the case, um, I guess my only question is, um, hmm, how do I... Nah, you Some... can be brutal. Go for it. Nah, it's not that I want to, it's not about being brutal or not. It's kind of just, like, I'm trying to think, where, where would I put my guys? I... I mean, I don't want to discount, I don't want to shit on this foxhole, because it's not a bad idea. I, I, just like how, I don't think L2 is a bad idea either. Like, you're in an area that, if if the white Russians want to shoot at them from a distance, there's immediate pluses from all the hindrance, which is great. I think that's a good idea. Um, if, if I hadn't gotten so close, you could dash out. And get into K four without much of an issue, I guess we'll call it. Actually, I forget if you can if you're in an entrenchment, but whatever. It's not really the point. Um, and then like, I don't know. I kind of, I'm trying to like think about it in my head of like, is G one a, a good fortified location, or would I put it in G two so that you could give like, um, you could put fakes in G one have them do all the work to try and get in uh, and then you get the free entry into that building but you can't get into g2 because it's fortified so you don't get the advance and you're kind of stuck at jason um, yeah uh, the, the major issue i have is that once i start lo losing troops it's very difficult to recover like uh if we're calling it now uh, i'm gonna say i have exactly three squads left and one half squad yeah which i that's you it, know that's it. not counting the reinforcements that's what i'm saying it's like yeah, yeah I, I, could, I could do it, but that's doubling my squads, and I still have less squads than you do. Like, I still have less firepower. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's... This is, like, the second time in a row, I think, where um, one side just gets, like, too much to attack with. And I think this is definitely a case of that. Um, where, like, I have 16 squads to your six and a half. Yeah, Even if I mean, you get four reinforcements, well, I mean, I guess technically, like, the group A would be seven and a half, and if you had group B, then it'd be seven. But, like, 16 to 11, your guys have range disadvantage, way fewer support weapons. I mean, I think they were counting on the mist to kind of try and, you know, reduce that, but mist sucks. Like, seven hexes is nothing. Like, that's less than, you know, your LMGs can't fire out that far, and at this point, that's most of your firepower, and it's super easy, as you as you found out, to move the MMGs up into a decent position and basically sit them there. You know, I, I mean... I'm kind of wondering, like, is the idea to have light rain so that it, it turns to heavy rain and then becomes more of a hindrance issue? Because I, I don't... I don't know, like, why, why else... Uh, why else put the rain yeah. in there? You know, it's like with the hillocks. I'm kind of like, what, what's the point? Like, we, you you overran the hillocks on like the turn two, you know? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, like, in hindsight, let's see. What would I have done different? Uh, probably contracted it down to the, uh, kind of that central, you see that central hedge there? Uh, yeah, here? Hedge, yeah, down in there, just kind of fortif fortified up in there, but, you know, even that has some of its disadvantages, I guess. Um, I don't really have enough troops to do, like, you know, kind of outposts, kind of make you take, like, you know, something in E3, for example, or... Uh, you know, up in um, up in those woods where I had the, the hip unit, that kind of thing. I think this would be a lot more interesting if I could hit more units, so you weren't aware of where I was. Mm. Like, I, I think the concealment is fine for for that purpose, but it basically lets you say, okay, I'm going to just push everything down the right side because that's less. You know, there's less over there basically. So, well, um, I'm I I kind of for me like a. I don't know. I think the way I attack, I tend to try and focus like all on one way, for the most part. Um, well, uh, sure, no, and, and that's that's good. That's you get as much firepower as you can in there. I, I guess what I'm saying is it lets you kind of pick and choose which side you're going to go to, as opposed to kind of saying, "Well, I'm not sure where they are, so I have to be a little more cautious, maybe about how I'm doing it, or you know, maybe I'm going to go yeah. balls to the wall, and I, you know, that aggression is its own problem." I guess would be the way to put it. Um, <sighs> This would be. I'm trying to think. Like, okay, so let's say, like, let's say you go all in on, like, I'm gonna defend back here and here, right? So you're in this, this one, like, this sort of like box, right? Yeah. So let's say you you do a sneaky thing. You pretend that the front guys here are, are real and they're fake. The guys in G2 is a fortified building, and then like. That's it. You kind of don't choose anything else to defend. So you're giving up. Because also, like, the the building thing from SSR 5 and, and 6, like, um, or the LVP stuff, it's like, it's just buildings on the map. So why, why give the, um, the White Russians 15 points for free? Like, I think... Technically, uh, yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm trying to think. I, there, I can technically set up on there. I think I can set up on the one row. But yeah, you give those away, and you know, uh, S1 and Q2, like you're more or less have to give those up. I mean, there's no way. There's no way to put units out there. I mean, I think it, I I simply have personally have not figured out how to reliably retreat troops. You know, to be honest. So I mean, that's that's fair. Like it, but it's hard though, because it's like. You know, you get out of a good, like, um, like these guys in the foxhole, it's not a bad idea. Like I said, I think it's really good you're using hindrance to the maximum effect, especially in that hex specifically. But it's like, okay, to get out, you have to have, you would have probably had to move, like, last turn. And so it kind of feels shitty sometimes as a player because you're giving away a good defensive position and it's like, oh, well... Now they just get, you know, the, the fortified building, or they just get the, the box hole. Um, but, yeah, I think it's weird that they would include, that they would make these three buildings count, and you can't do anything about it. So it's like, well, why the fuck, like, why, what does it matter? Like, that's 15 points that you, that is just tacked on for no real reason, because... I mean, if I suppose if I wanted to be a dick, I could run the cavalry through there and capture sh them. Sure, but, like... Even if I'm not using them anywhere else, so. So I guess the argument then is like, if it's on any, is it any edge or any board edge? Uh, what does it say? God damn it! Any one non-west edge. Okay, so technically, it doesn't matter the board. So if you came in on the south side, which is the left side, then like technically you could have, you know. Uh, I'll just use cavalry. I'll just call him cavalry. It's like you could have a cavalry guy up here. His sole goal is just to go chump chump, get that. Then after, maybe like run over here. Deny those 15 points. Okay. But like, you're still taking a quarter of the firepower that you've been given, and you're just saying like, go do something for, for three turns, because you'd have to, you wouldn't even be able to do it. You'd have to take the cavalry, get here, disembark or whatever. If you have enough movement factors, you get into DD7. Okay. 
then the next turn, your next movement turn, you have to move here. That's two turns. Turn six, you get back on the cavalry, and then turn seven, you get here. So I guess it's possible with one, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so well, technically... yes, but the problem here is they're going to get shot to limit now. <laughs> well, machine guns if you choose to fire them that way. Presumably, right? But even if even if you don't, right? Let's say, let's argue. Let's say for the sake of argument that like I never shoot at them. They have a free pass. They they reclaim fifteen. Uh, uh, VP. That's still uh, an entire squad, though. That you've that's out of the game. Like I don't have to worry about it. So it's it's one less that's uh, protected, uh, potentially protecting a cluster of buildings, which is way more important because in five hexes, five contiguous hexes, actually six, there's thirty points. Yeah. No. Uh, that's the thing. It's so, like. They, they, they're useful, but I, I really, it, it's weird. It's almost they're more useful as just, okay, am I going to delay them to make it harder to get to that victory threshold, you know? Like, so if I push them off a, uh, what, a turn or two, I forget what it is, um, it, it kicks your, your value up by by 10. So now you got to capture. Yeah. Maybe, maybe now you got to capture that G1, G2 building kind of thing. Um, yeah, well, I mean... This and I think that's the other problem too. Is like, okay, so you don't do anything with them for two turns, and it gives me ten points. So, two buildings. I think like maybe it should have been twenty and then thirty. You know, because yeah. like, what what can you even do in 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 two turns of movement with four squads, uh, unless the Polish uh, the Polish unless the white Russian players is just had horrible luck or whatever. I I don't I don't know I. I think it's basically like like you were like I was saying, where you're just going to dump them in the back to kind of go and and you know back capture uh, buildings that are that are kind of behind the front lines a little bit to kind of deny those points. Like uh, say those two buildings up north near where or up up on the top part near your MMGs, and then those two buildings in C5 and C6. Like I'm assuming that that guy in C6 is going to be moving on E6 and then in from there. Um, so you know you throw a squad or t squad in there to capture those buildings kind of thing um so yeah like you could do it that way but i don't know a it just feels cheesy as hell it feels like you're just cheesing the vps um you know you're well actually... i mean we're gonna come across scenarios where that's good that will be the case but uh, yeah no i don't know i just it personally does me a little raw i don't like doing that i like to actually win by winning you know not right. just like yeah, yeah, yeah i'm gonna go in and you know you lose by five points because i'm gonna I'm gonna... All I do is skulk all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, that's like I'd rather give it up than go from there. I mean, I think another squad or two might be nice or slightly better quality troops. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's kind of a weird one. Like, I think it's possible for this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think it's very possible. I had some crappy luck on a lot of rolls. Um, and I'm not blaming it on that. Like, that's just part of the game, but that didn't yeah. help, you know. Um, I think my my uh, my decoy placement was poor this go round. Um, I'm just, I don't know those. I still am, am you know weird on using those. Um, what else? I think yeah that one half squad that's in G two. I think that was like an ELR or something. You know I don't know that they just totally got. Uh, <laughs> I think they yeah, were or heat of battle or something. Yeah. Yeah, I forget what it was. Uh, yeah, in any case, uh, maybe they were in like HO or something and they were out, they were out in. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's. I think this one is, is another one of those, like, if if this was tested, I would love to see, like, how thoroughly that is, that, that is the case. Because I think even the balance is, like, it says, like, in balances. Uh, you know, white Russians lower it by 10 VP. Red Russians uh, or Mongolians increase by 10 VP. It's like that's not that's not a lot. Like uh, I don't it's get two buildings. Yeah, it's... like I would probably trade one of the half squads for a full squad, like immediately uh, as a thing, and I'd probably have the balance be like I don't know the the. Maybe the balance is like Mongolians get both, uh, re like uh, both groups, group A and group B instead of a choice. Uh, yeah, and to be honest, I'm not even sure. 
like I wasn't even sure like how to go between the two reinforcements. It's like the BD machine gun would be nice, but the squad is also nice because that's you know it's got a little more versatility, I guess. Because the medium machine gun isn't going to go anywhere. All you got is a you got a crew, and so they're gonna you know they're down to like one MP or something like that. <laughs> well, that's it's, it's generally why you keep them with um uh with the leader because. If the MMG is is five uh, PP in this case, then you're only losing one movement movement factor overall because the leader provides you know one uh, one carrying capacity. So instead of moving six hexes, you'd move five. Oh sure, no no I I I mean I understand that. I'm just saying you're not really moving them around all that often. Like you're gonna try and put them in a position and leave them there. So yeah, I mean I think like. If I would help, but then the mist is working against that, so I don't know what the hell they're thinking there, you know? I mean, I think if I had taken the MMG, I I can only really think of, like, three spots to put them, and that'd be, like, E1, uh, K4, and N3. E1, because it covers, like, a lot of a lot of area so you can at least like maximize the range out of it in in open terrain like specifically um k4 because you can see at least down like to the hillock and if there's hindrances there's hindrances it's not the end of the world um it also gives you a nice view down this road which you can do a fire lane with um and i think like in a similar vein n2 or n3 you can kind of do the same where like you know you can there's pockets of LOS in in the back that you can do, um, but you're covering you know a lot of the the close up right flank. Yep. But, and then you, and then you got a shot down that uh, down toward I two toward that crossroads. Yeah. Yeah, and like at, at worst, like you know, um, the only one that would suck, I think the like the most in terms of like if something bad happens, is E one, because you don't you're you're not to say like route path specifically, but getting out of E1 is much harder than K4 or N3. But otherwise, like, I don't know. It's, um... Yeah, it's a bit of a puzzler. Like, this is one that I think you gotta play like two or three times to kind of get a feel for where things need to go. And that kind Yeah. Of uh, and yeah, I still think, you know, I definitely still think that uh, the White Russians should get less units. It's... Especially, like, you can get a third MMG. Like, if I pick that group, it's like, what am I supposed to do with... Like, how are you supposed to do something against triple MMG just, like, waltzing around places? I mean, that's kind of why I wasn't firing, because I was really afraid. You have a lot of firepower out there with a pretty good range, so I was pretty reliant on that concealment to kind of keep me alive. I mean... My guys kind of suck. Like, I mean, three three sevens are not the best. I mean, they're okay, but yeah. you can put a, you can put more firepower on me from range, and you can fire groups, so you know you, you can get some good stuff there. And that's right, the Mongolians can't fire group. <sighs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah, but it it kind of like it reinforces the point of like you have less units. And you can't fire group, so any fire power that you would want to apply is uh, even more like hurt by it, you know. Yeah, so it, it's like I, I felt like I had to rely on concealment a little bit more. Like I wanted to open yeah. up at a, at a longer range to kind of maybe try and break some of your guys or pin them or something to kind of break up those big lines of troops coming forward. But if I do that, my guy is immediately going to get like. <laughs> <laughs> just get pasted by a bunch of different guys firing at him and there isn't a lot of hindrance on the map particularly on the right side as you're looking at it yeah, yeah the, the cornfields or something but you know can't light them on fire yeah good luck with that right yeah man so yeah it's interesting i mean i'm not i, I don't know where the mongolian barbecue rest, you know reference comes in <laughs> but you know okay uh, in a rainstorm and across ravines, the Baron's men attacked those communists, quote-unquote. Although the village was taken, most of the Mongolians scattered over the hills. Some of the allied Mongolian chieftains were outraged at this worthless battle and pulled back their support from this new friend, the White Russian. Baron Ungern had lost his biggest support, the local populace, and would have to attack the Reds virtually alone. Yeah, I don't get where barbecue comes in. 
like if it was dry and I could light everything on fire, that that might have been more fun. Yeah, or maybe like if the um, I mean, it, I don't think it would apply just because. Well, no, they sh you know, they existed back then. Like maybe if there's a flamethrower, you know. Hell, just give people molotovs. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, for sure. Damn. Weird. All right. Um, I will have the other. I haven't finished setting up the other scenario yet. Um, yeah, no worries. Uh, I will have it ready for you uh, probably tomorrow sometime during the day. Um, cool. And get it so, to you so we can figure that out. Um, that's a yeah. That's gonna be a weird one. I'm not. Uh, I really don't know. This is. A, it's either gonna end very very quickly, or it's gonna be a total slog. So. I'm. I mean, personally, I'm looking forward to it because I think, uh, unless, unless the the number of units gets too crazy i think it offers like looking at the victory conditions i think that one offers a good uh opportunity to just like essentially there's no bad setup you know what i mean like everything everything you choose uh, as long as you're you're uh as long as you're killing mongolians in your case um for the vp then like it, it's it's a benefit because the, the Mongolians have to do so much to get VP that, um, you know, any kind of pressure is good. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of a little bit stymied because there's a bunch of different places I can set up for decent, you know, like I kind of know where you need to go um, yeah. for your VP. So that's that's what it is. You either got to attack me and wipe me out or you got to exit a bunch of your guys off the board or capture buildings. And I know where those are. Mm -hmm. And there, honestly, there aren't that many buildings on the board, so that kind of simplifies things a little bit. So yeah, no, I, I've got some ideas, but it's kind of like, hmm, okay, well, there's, you know, if you decide to go this way, then that makes my life a little bit harder. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. It looks interesting. There's a nice mix, like there's some artillery going on and um, no off-board stuff, but, you know, the on-board stuff is always fun. Uh, yeah, for... your artillery. <laughs> Um, is there any? There's no vote on like what I need to pick. I can just pick whichever group I want. Right? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't bother with the vote for uh, for cost and mistake. Yeah, no worries. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, this one I'm not. I'm not super proud of this. I, I was. I'm glad my little fanatics in the woods there managed to, to be just <laughs> a complete annoyance. But um, yeah, no, this one I. I yeah. Is what it is. Um, all right. So I will get that to you. Um, tomorrow or Monday morning and um, or maybe later tonight if I sit down I'm just sit down and finish off right now. Um, no rush. I will get it back to you and then we'll be good for for next Friday. Barring Sounds good. Work deciding to be squirrely. <laughs> Sounds good. Ah, server goes down, you think the world ends. <laughs> I know the feeling. So alright man, I will talk to you next week. Yeah, sounds good. Have a good one. You too.